Hi, this is Oli from Odd Sound, and in this video, I am going to talk about the transpose macro in our MTS ESP master plugin, because in the version 1.04 update, we have made a couple of small changes to it. The first change is that we have renamed the different modes to better reflect why you might use one of them rather than what it's doing under the hood. And the second change is that we've added a fourth mode here called modulate, which can be leveraged for adaptive tuning. And that's something I'm going to cover in a separate video to which this one is essentially a precursor. Something to note is that existing presets or sessions that you have which use the transpose macro will still load and sound exactly the same. Um, I'm going to, in this video, demonstrate with a 12-step scale just to help provide some familiarity to people that are used to working with 12 tet. Um, the difference with this scale is that it's non-equal. And as you can see in the tuning line, the intervals between the scale steps are not the same. How do we add a transpose macro? Well, we go to the macro tab. We click the plus button here in the macro list, select transpose, and there we have it. There's our transpose macro. What does it do? Well, it will do one or both of two things depending on the mode that we select here. Um, the first thing it might do is adjust the reference frequency, and you can think of this as a sort of global pitch bending, so it will shift the pitch of everything up or down a bit. The second thing it might do is rotate the interval pattern of the scale, and I'm just going to quickly step to the side to talk about that to make sure we understand what's going on. Uh, rotating interval patterns is something that you may well have come across in 12 tech theory when talking about modes, and the common way that this is first approached is starting with the major scale, which we may also refer to as the Ionian mode, which sounds like this. And it has a interval pattern of tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. And we can rotate that interval pattern by taking the tone at the start, moving it to the end of the pattern. And that gives us the Dorian mode sounding like this. And then once again, we can rotate that pattern by taking the tone at the start, moving it to the, to the end, and we get the Phrygian mode sounding like this. And then another rotation, moving the, now the first semitone to the end, gives us the Lydian mode. And we can continue going until we get back to the Ionian mode again. Um, so we can apply this idea of... Um, rotating an interval pattern or modal rotation in MTS master um, by right clicking on the first step in the tuning table and using this set mode from selected step option and watch what happens to the intervals particularly at the start and the end of the scale in the tuning line here we can see that they've all shifted to the left one and the interval that the scale started with is now up at the end of the scale we can rotate again by Clicking, right clicking on the first step again, again, set mode from selected step, and that's shifted them to the left again and moved the first one to the end of the scale. And we can continue to do this 12 times until we get back to the original scale because it's a 12 step scale. So let's now go back to the transpose macro and I'm just going to set a few things up because I have a four octave MIDI keyboard here and I want to use the lowest octave on the keyboard to control the transpose macro such that when I press a key in that octave, that's the key I'm going to transpose to. Um, we can do this from the MIDI column in the macro list and we can say that we want this macro to respond to note on messages on any channel. Now I know that the lowest note on my keyboard plays MIDI note C0 and I know then that I want MIDI note C0 up to B0 to control this macro. So I can set the range accordingly from this menu. So the range end is going to be B0 and the range start is going to be C0. And then one further thing I need to do is map the zero key to C0. What does that mean? That means that when I press the lowest key on the keyboard, C0, that's going to set the transpose value to zero, i.e. no transpose. Then as I go up from there, it will increase the transpose value. So to demonstrate this, I'll make sure that MIDI data is rooted into NTS ESP master down here. 
Then if I press a C sharp zero, you can see it sets the macro value to one and it will increase from there. One thing you notice here is that you can hear the internal synth of MTS ESP Master when I play those notes. And actually, I just want them to control the macro when I press them. I don't want to hear anything. And I can do that by going to the setup page, down to the MIDI section, and use the filter control notes setting. Set that on. What that does is that any MIDI notes that are assigned to do anything in the MTS ESP master will be filtered out from the internal synth. So now, if I play the notes in the lowest octave, you can see the transpose macro changing, but you don't hear anything. But notes higher up still do trigger the synth. Now, this applies to any connected MTS ESP clients as well. So for example, I have an instance of Surge in this session too, and notes higher up on the keyboard trigger it, but notes in the lower octave don't. This means I can still use them to control transpose. However, I need to make sure that MIDI data is always rooted into MTS ESP master. So either I could set monitor in, or I could make sure it's record enabled here if auto is on. Um, I may, when I'm playing, not want to hear the synth from MTS ESP master, so I can set the wave to off. So now in this situation, I can play Surge, but I can use the lowest octave on the keyboard to control the transpose macro. So let's look now at the different modes that the transpose macro has. The first one we're going to look at is mode rotate. This one doesn't affect the reference frequency at all. All it does is it adjusts the step intervals to emulate the effect of rotating the interval pattern, just like we looked at earlier. So if I press the C sharp key in the lowest octave to set the transpose value to one, that effectively adjusts the step intervals so that the interval pattern um, is that starting from step one of the scale here. So essentially the first rotation of the interval pattern. Then if I press the D key, that rotates the interval pattern again, and I can continue going up until I get to 11, which is the final rotation before we get back to the original scale. And if I continue to increase the value of the macro, which I can do by dragging here, if I go up to 12, you can see that the intervals are not affected by this macro because we're back at the original scale. And as I continue to increase the macro value, it will just wrap around those 12 rotations again. So given an unequal scale like this, using the mode rotate is a great way to discover new scales from just loading one scale. Um, you, you, got, a, in this case, another 11 scales that you can play with just by loading this one unequal scale. So next we're going to look at the transpose mode, which um, both adjusts the step intervals and the reference frequency. And it effectively shifts the frequency of each key so that it plays the frequency of the step above or below it. So for a quick example, I'm going to play a D on the keyboard here, which we can see is mapped to step two. And we can see that step two plays a frequency of 299 Hertz. Then if I set the transpose amount to one, transposing up by one, this key will now play the frequency of the step one above it. So step three, which is 314 Hertz. And then if I transpose up by two, it will play the frequency two steps above it. So two plus two is four. The frequency of step four is 327 hertz. And that is what we hear. Um, so this, um, the transpose mode could be said to function like you'd expect a transpose function on a, a standard 12 tech keyboard. It shifts the frequency map of the keyboard up and down. Um, with an unequal scale like this, um, what happens is that if you play the same melody, um, it's not going to sound like a pitch shifted version of itself when you transpose because the intervals between the notes of the melody will change. 
So here's a quick example. So we can say that this is transposition without modulation, which um, may be a great way of discovering new melodies, but um, we may not want that. We may want to the uh, intervals between a melody to remain constant when we transpose. And so for this, we have the transpose and modulate mode. So this mode adjusts the reference frequency only. It doesn't change the um, scale intervals at all. And really it just shifts the frequency of the tonic note um, to the next step up or down. Um, so uh, if I play the tonic here, C, which is 261 hertz, if I transpose up by one, it will now play one step up, 280 hertz. And again, it will now play 299 hertz. And what this means is now that if I play that same melody from earlier, but transpose, it will sound like a pitch shifted version of itself. So this can be said to be transposition with modulation. Um, or in another way, you could look at it as always playing your piano keyboard in the key of C, um, but using the transpose macro here to modulate different keys, but with modulation that now works for unequal scales like this one. So if you are a better keyboard player than I am and you're confident playing in keys other than C, well, you can use the modulate mode. This works by adjusting reference frequency and rotating the interval pattern such that the key that you transpose to is where the interval pattern then starts. So for example, to modulate from the key of C, which I'm in now to the key of G, I'll press the G in the lowest octave on my keyboard, which sets the macro value to seven, seven being the number of steps that G is above C, and the interval pattern of the scale will now start from the G key, not from the C key, so I've modulated to G. Um, I can carry on modulating up, uh, but as with the mode rotate, um, when I go up to a value of 12, which I can do by dragging to continue here, I get back to the original scale, and then it just wraps around the modulations again. One thing you may have noticed here is the adaptive tuning setting, which appears when you use the modulate or transpose and modulate modes. It's set to off for now, and I'm going to talk about what happens when you turn it on in the next video on adaptive tuning. So look out for that. If there's anything you didn't understand or quite grasp in this video, pop a comment down below and I will try my best to answer. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching.